everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet the prairie scarf. Uh, this scarf was designed in order to complement the prairie beanie, which can also be found here on my YouTube channel, as well as free on richtexturescrochet.com. Today for the prairie scarf, uh, you can see here in front of you, it's a simple stitch design uh, that features these stripes of color. And show you mine here. The end fringe is just some simple front and back post double crochet stitches and that's going to give you a nice edging to each side of your scarf. The finished scarf measures approximately 7 inches by 65 and uh, today for the pattern I'm going to be using a worsted weight yarn. I'm going to use two colors, this white and gray. Both of these are uh, Woolies by Lion Brand Yarn. Uh, you're going to need two balls of each color. Each ball has about 200 yards, so you'll need about 400 yards of a worsted weight yarn uh, in, uh, in each color. So 800 altogether. I'm also going to be using a 5 millimeter crochet hook. And then you'll need a scissors and yarn needle for finishing off your work. The written, free written pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. I've provided the direct link there for you in the description of this video. Also links to both of the items that I'll be using today. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. There's lots of other scarf patterns and uh, crochet beanie patterns and also this channel is updated weekly with a free crochet stitch tutorial on Sundays. Our pattern today is worked in rows so you're going to start by taking your color A, I'm going to use this gray here, and make a slip knot. I'm going to start with a foundation chain of 31 chain stitches if you would like to change the size of your scarf, you'll work an even number of chains plus three for your turning chain. So today I am uh, working 31 chains. That's 20, 30, and 31. Once you have your foundation chain worked, sorry I hit the camera there, once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to uh, begin row 1 by working a double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook. 1, 2, 3, 4, double crochet into that fourth chain. Your chain three does count as a stitch and you're then going to double crochet into each chain all the way across. When you come to the end you can chain two and turn your work. For row two, chain two and turn your work. We're now going to work some front and back post double crochet stitches. You'll begin by working a front post double crochet stitch around the next stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook from the front through to the back, out through the front again, working around the post of that next stitch. Yarn over and drop a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two more. That's your front post double crochet. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the next stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, uh, bring your hook in back of your work, insert your hook from the back through to the front, around the post, out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. You're then going to repeat that all the way across. Work a front post double crochet around the next post of the next stitch followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat it all the way across to the final stitch which is your starting chain three 
and then work a double crochet into the top of that starting chain three. At the end of your row two, work a double crochet in the top of that starting chain, chain two, and turn your work. For row three, you've chained two. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across. Back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a front post double crochet around the next. Repeat it all the way across and then finish off with the double crochet into the top of your starting chain two. For row four, chain two and turn your work. You're now going to work one front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet. Repeat it all the way across. You should now start to see this uh, front and back post double crochet ribbing coming into effect here and you have these raised stitches coming up the front. So continue all the way across and work a double crochet into your final stitch which is into the top of that starting chain two. For row five we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're now going to start into some of that striped pattern uh, that you saw in the photo and uh, that striped pattern is worked in a stitch called the herringbone half double crochet. So we're going to start, we're continuing here in our color A. We're going to work our first herringbone stitch into the first stitch at the base of our turning chain. To work the herringbone stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, also drawing it through the first loop on your hook. You're then going to yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. Repeat that all the way across in each stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, then draw that same loop through the first loop on your hook. You'll have two loops remaining, yarn over and pull through two. Repeat that all the way across in your color A. When you come to the final stitch, we're going to switch to our color B and I will show you how I like to do that uh, in just a moment. I'm now at the end of my row five and I want to switch to my color B. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm still working in the color A. Insert your hook into uh, that final stitch. Actually, I see I have one extra stitch here. So I'm going to work that final one. So now I need to switch <laughs> uh, at the top here of my chain two. So I'm going to yarn over with my color A, insert your hook into the top of that chain two yarn over and draw up a loop still in your color A and draw it through the first loop on your hook. You can then drop your color A and uh, I found with the flow of my scarf because I didn't put an edging all the way around at the end of each color change in this pattern I do fasten off and weave in my ends just so you're aware of that as we go. So drop that color A, pick up your color B, place it on your hook and pull through. You're now ready to go with your color B 
and uh, and work the next rows. So um, you can then chain one and turn your work. Now to make it easier uh, to fa uh, fasten off and weave in your ends, what I recommend doing in this scarf is working over top of your ends so that you can simply trim them uh, at the end of your project. So we're now going to work two rows of herringbone stitch in our color B. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch. I'm working over top of and around those two tails. Yarn over, draw up a loop and draw it through that first loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Repeat that all the way across and for about six or seven stitches is uh, for as uh, how long I like to kind of work over top of the two tails. You're just going to continue working your herringbone half double crochet all the way across and this is for your row six. So just continue working. I'll work a few more. Once you feel that uh, you've worked over the ends enough you can stop working over top of them and then either right now or later on you can just go ahead and trim them and uh, that'll save you having to weave them in later on and then just continue working your row of herringbone stitch so you want to work two rows in this color a so herringbone all the way across, chain one, turn your work, work the herringbone stitch all the way across for row seven, and in that final stitch, switch back to your color A. At the end of your row seven, you're going to switch back. So I've worked two rows in the herringbone stitch in color B switch back to your color A using the same method as before chain one and turn your work you're now going to work for rows eight and nine two more rows of herringbone stitch in your color A again I recommend working over top of those two little tails so that you don't have to weave them in later on. So you're going to chain one and uh, remember your chain one does not count as a stitch. It's just your turning chain. So work your herringbone stitches all the way across. You want two rows in your color A and then you're going to switch back to your color B. Then for um, uh, for the next part of the pattern uh, you're going to continue working two rows of herringbone stitch in each of your colors alternating back and forth as uh, I've done here between your colors A and your colors B so you're going to want two rows in each color alternating back and forth and you're going to continue to do that so repeating those rows six through to nine until your mark from the beginning measures approximately 62 inches. Once uh, you reach that point, you've alternated colors A and B until your work from the beginning measures about 62 inches. You can meet me back here and I'll show you how to work that uh, edging on the final side of your scarf. Now once you've alternated back and forth uh, until your work measures approximately 62 inches, uh, I'm not going to do the full length here in the video, uh, but you can see I've gone back and forth. So yours will measure 62 inches. Uh, you'll want to end on a color B row and then switch over to your color A. Then in color A, you're going to work one row of the herringbone stitch. So 
uh, you're not working two as you did before just in this final row before we start the edging we'll just work one row in that herringbone stitch so I'm just going to stitch across I'm working over top of my little tails to make it easier later on And this will be our final row in the color A before we work our front and back post double crochets. I am almost all the way across. Just a few stitches left. And there we go. So after you work this final row of herringbone in your color A, you're then going to chain three and turn your work. I'll just trim these ones off to make it look a little bit nicer. Your chain three there is going to count as a double crochet stitch. You're then going to for your next row work one double crochet into the next stitch. So the chain three counts as a stitch you're not working in that first but into the next stitch work a double crochet followed by a double crochet in each stitch all the way across. When you come to this end of this row, chain two and turn your work. Once you have double crocheted all the way across, uh, you're going to chain two and turn your work. You're now going to work a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across, front post, double crochet around the post of the next, and followed by a back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across to the final stitch, which will be your starting chain three, and you're going to double crochet into the top of your starting chain three. For your next row, chain two and turn your work. We're now going to begin by working a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat that across back post double crochet in the next stitch followed by a front post double crochet in the next stitch. Repeat it all the way across to your first stitch, which was your turning chain two, and then double crochet into the top of that turning chain two, chain two, and turn your work. At the end of that row, you're going to chain two and turn your work. We're now going to work one final row of front and back post double crochet stitches, this time beginning with a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next. Repeat that all the way across and double crochet into the top of that starting chain two. I am at the end of my final row here working the double crochet 
into the top of my chain two. At the end of this row, you can go ahead and fasten off. Then go and weave in any ends and your prairie scarf is then complete. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to create, uh, how to complete the prairie scarf. Uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe and if you happen to finish this scarf and post a photo on social media, I would love to see it because I love to see all your finished product projects. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Thank you.